And then what we are promoting in the communities and what I'm going to help you all achieve is the establishment of missions. Now, the word mission is very, very specific in their world. And this, by the way, is a replica of actually how they achieve world dominance themselves. What the Jesuits did was they went out and they declared their unholy province model for the Venetians, and then they went out and, and put in place missions. And those missions became consulates, those consulates became governments. Well, the model works. It achieved its objective. There is no reason not to repeat a model that gets us to where we need to be. So missions start the ball rolling. A mission is a legitimate post, a mission post. Once the mission has developed its own leadership and representation, then there is some diplomatic representation, some legitimate diplomatic representation. Then it goes from a mission to a consulate. When the functions of government have been put in place, then it becomes the government of the campus. It's straightforward, it's consistent, and it can help us get to where we need to be in a non-controversial model, a model that mimics the key elements of the system. Now, just because we use uh, and we will be following um, positions of honour, Will they honour? No, I don't, I don't, on everything I do, I don't do anything on the expectation that the Jesuits will do the right thing or the Vatican will do the right thing or any of them will do the right thing. I have contributed what I can always on the presumption that they have done the wrong thing for hundreds if not thousands of years and they will continue to do the wrong thing. But always in law there must be remedy always there must be the olive branch because when you remove that, it can no longer be the law. So at every stage, there is the opportunity for them to remediate what they've done. Will they? That's their choice. I'm not condemning that they won't, but I'm simply saying that everything we do is on the presumption that just as not a single organisation, a single group has aided and supported the development of this to this point where it is you now, there may not be a single entity within their existing system that redeems itself. So be it. That will be history. Or maybe there will be. That will be history. So just in summary, there are some important name changes and there'll be exp explanations of it. And this is not jumping from one to another. This is a refinement and a sophistication. Just as we share knowledge, we are... A, a, a grouping of sharing information, developing codes. This is education. Thus, uh, communities at a national level are universities, at a state level they're provinces, and at a local level they're campuses. And then developing missions into consulates to become the government of a campus. Well, on the communities, I've been working on the community charters, and this latest knowledge is extremely important and it's another reason why we didn't launch the, the model of it today for you. But I'm mindful that a number of you are very keen to start seeing the community models of sharing uh, energy in trade and of course in the use of money and use of accounts very soon. And I look forward to sharing that with you and I know that it, again it's a frustration for you. But as, a, as we've said tonight, remember that we're dealing with a system that has been in place for minimums of hundreds of years and in some parts for thousands of years. Just because we take an extra few weeks to perfect something is an instant in time compared to how long they've been here. So please, I thank you for your patience. Now, I just want to end with the idea uh, that I said I'd share with you about the New World Order and what they did last century in just clearing our mind of the concern of the future. I won't spend too much time on it and it's probably going to be a, a phone call that we can talk about at another date. But the topic is, is the ruling elite going to press a button and torch the earth 
if they are ultimately challenged. I would have said to you up to three years ago, the answer to that was more likely yes than no. And the reason that was more likely yes than no is that the children that have taken over the system now continue to bay for a new world order. Now, when they continued to bay for a new world order, that told me that they had no knowledge of what took place in the 20th century about the real creation of the new world order and the smashing of the covenant, the manual of mental illness, which we know as the Talmud, that has nothing to do with sacred scripture, nothing to do with it at all. It is an aberration and a usurping of history. The Talmud is full of hate. It is the most hatred-filled text ever to have been conceived and has nothing to do with Abrahamic faith. It has nothing to do with scriptures. It is designed to usurp the Torah, not to help it, to usurp it, not to support it. Now, in the 20th century, groups of Khazar elite Venetians took it upon themselves that they no longer wanted to live in ghettos and that they wanted to take over the world and actually spend their wealth. And that's Blondie agreeing with me. Blondie, stop it. When they did this, they created the concept of the New World Order. When they did this, they sacrificed people in World War II. When they did this, they came up with their own illuminated Messiah, Albert Einstein. When they did this, they torched their own history and started afresh. Well, if the elite today are faced and exposed, they can't do a New World Order again. It's already been done. Their ignorance is that they had no idea of what they did in World War II. They destroyed the Talmud, the covenant. They destroyed their blood oath, their blood libel. Utterly destroyed it. They are heretics to the divine. They are heretics to the darkness. There has never been a group in civilized history, never, that have been greater heretics than the elite. And there has never been such a paradox that the Jesuits who were sworn, sworn on on their lives to hunt down the worst heretics there are, there's never been a circumstance where that group actually protects the greatest heretics of history. It is an extraordinary situation that we find ourselves in for the last 70 years. If the Jesuits even believed an ounce of their own philosophy, they would hunt every one of these ultimate heretics down, heretics of dark and heretics of light. But the Jesuits lost their way and these heretics have not been called out until now. And the children have had no idea of what the parents have done. So when people say, ah, well, World War III, ah, Armageddon, ah, New World Order, ah, end of the world, Yes, their world's coming to an end. But now I don't believe, as enough have woken up, that we will see that kind of carnage. Well, it's been an hour. Cut a lot of subjects. Had a few distractions. I appreciate it again. I hope you found the the concepts and things we spoke of tonight interesting. I try my best every single day to help. I know there's a lot. I know it's frustrating. I know a number of you are waiting for things like the Ritz, but I look forward to answering your questions now, and thanks again for listening. Thanks so much, Frank. Uh, that's extremely interesting. Uh, and again, with coming up with the Ides of March, that's a, that's a whole other story as well. Uh, we ask uh, the callers to get in queue for asking questions tonight, and uh, you do that by getting on star eight. So press star eight to get in the queue for questions. Uh, we're going to take a couple from the uh, the chat. Uh, one was uh, from Amanda uh, regards to 
uh, the executor letter. So let me just pull that up. Or if uh, can you see it on your chat screen? Uh, what's the question? Uh, do you remember what it was? Uh, it was just regarding the uh, the executor letter. Uh, so if Amanda's on, if you could just retype. Okay, that here in. we go. How, yep. Here we go. How how does one know that an executor letter has not been named? Okay. Um, when a when a writ is first issued. It's it's a catch-22 in terms of the. Let me explain why why we know this to be absolute fact. The the sacrament of penance only works when you confess your sins. You confess your sins, so it has to be free will. Yes. Now, because it's a free will decision, the sacrament doesn't work if they confess your sins for you. So it is a legal construct when you don't consent, where they force you. They say they don't force you because you don't object. I know that sounds perverse, and of course it is perverse, but in order for them to get through that, that little hole called the sacrament of penance and create the indulgence, which makes what they're doing lawful, spiritually lawful, the argument is that you confess. Now, the same applies in trust. You appoint the judge, the executor, at the hearing. You do it. They can't appoint the judge, the, the executor. Right? You have to do it. If you don't consent, then the underlying process of the sacrament of penance and the indulgence doesn't work. So they're in a bind. What it is, is the history of this evolved over time. Would they do it differently today? Absolutely. But they're not going to go back, stop the boat, and start again. This evolved out of their control system, and it is uh, features and quirks of history. So when they issue a writ, I know this sounds bizarre, but when they issue the writ, you're the beneficiary, and there is no other named party in terms of the trust at that point. It's only when you go to the hearing that when you perfect the plea, the plea is the order. The plea to the judge is to appoint the judge, the executor of the constructive trust. Now, I hope that makes sense uh, for Amanda, and that's why we know. We know because as we now understand the multi-layers of what they're doing, we understand that they can't do it any other way without breaking the foundation, which is the indulgence. Okay? Great. Thanks, Frank. Uh, again, as we ask people who want to join on to the call, who's calling in, if you want to get in queue, it's star eight. That's star eight. Uh, Frank, anything else in the chat line? Uh, what have we got? Uh, if someone can put a queue, like put question or something, it's easier to, to feed through. Uh, um, I can't really see any other. There's a bit of, sort of chatter and stuff, people talking about different things. So really, um, punch in your questions. Just go question, that's fine. Or if you want to talk, uh, just um, just you know, ask, ask Brian and, and come on and give us a question. Frank, meantime, uh, did you want to uh, maybe even just go in a little bit about more about March? And maybe Mars or yeah, it's okay. Um, people probably remember the story about Julius Caesar, beware the Ides of March, I D E S. When you look up the Latin for Ides, Ides, I D E S and I D E M, it means uh, same and equal, and that gives you a clue. <clears throat> In fact, the Ides of March was peculiar for for other periods that were also called the Ides, it was called the Idus, I-D-U-S. And it, and it was particular and important because it was the sacred day, the day of blood, which was the day of the birth and the death of Mitra, Mitra, the god of the legions, the most famous god of the ancient world, saviour god of the ancient world, that first came into being in March the 14th or Nissan the 14th, 455, 